Structural insulated panels, or SIPs, are an alternative building strategy that have been used for decades in both high-performance buildings and affordable housing. SIPs are essentially a sandwich of OSB and rigid foam that are adhered and bonded together to form a very strong but lightweight panel that can be used for structural purposes for walls, roofs, and even floors. The thick rigid foam provides a robust thermal break between the interior conditioned space and the exterior environment, and the panel allows for minimally interrupted, continuous insulation. Some of these panels can be as thick as 12 and a quarter inches. I can't think of many other ways to easily achieve this level of continuous insulation without resorting to using multiple thick layers of rigid insulation. Now these panels are prefabricated in a factory and are formed into shapes and sizes to fit the exact specifications and dimensions of your home. Obviously this means you need to have your room sizes and dimensions finalized and approved for permitting before you send off your plan set. But once they're fabricated, they're all shipped to the job site and they can be assembled extremely quickly. That's one of the main benefits of SIPs. They really cut down on labor and your construction timeline. Some homes can even be framed in less than a day, which is really useful if you're trying to cut down on labor costs or if you're working with an expedited timeline for whatever reason. SIPs are often used in combination with timber frame structures since the panels can span quite far distances without intermediary support, but they can also be used as a standalone structural system in which they can serve as bearing walls to support SIP roof panels and floors. Now because SIPs are composed of a lot more moisture sensitive materials, that being the OSB facers, there are a few critical details you need to be aware of to ensure that they don't rot away in a few years. SIPs can perform exceptionally if they're detailed correctly, but there's very little forgiveness if they get wet. Let's talk about water management. You can't just use any old house wrap or Tyvek or any mechanically fastened roof underlayments that you pick up from the home improvement store. You absolutely either need a self-adhered or fluid applied system, but essentially we want the weather barrier to be bonded to the OSB sheathing instead of flapping in the wind like a standard house wrap. This is because house wraps allow water and air to travel freely behind the house wrap if it gets inside and leak into a larger area of the building, whereas any leaks in a self-adhering or fluid applied system will be localized and relatively insignificant. Controlling air leakage is another big reason why a self-adhered or fluid applied system should be specified, as the panel joints are at the highest risk of rot and deterioration, and air transport can deposit moisture in concentrated amounts. This is especially prevalent in roof applications, as the warm, moisture-laden interior air rises and can leak through poorly sealed panel seams and condense in the upper part of the panel. This happened to many SIP roofs in cold climates in the early 2000s in Juneau, Alaska, where there's an extreme temperature gradient between the interior and exterior environment, and so it's critical that we stop any water and air leakage through those seams by ensuring that the water control layer is bonded to the surface. We also want to make sure that both the weather-resistive barrier and the roofing underlayment are vapor permeable and paired with a ventilated cladding or roof covering. This allows any moisture that's present in the OSB to dry to the exterior without getting trapped beneath the water control layer, preventing degradation of the OSB. Now, when we talk about a ventilated cladding, we're talking about installing the cladding over a ventilated rain screen to provide the benefits of a drainage gap with airflow to promote drying. You can easily get drainage behind a cladding material with as little as a sixteenth of an inch gap, but to ensure reliable airflow, a minimum of a three-eighths of an inch gap that's ventilated at the top and bottom is necessary, as we want the benefits of airflow to help dry out the sheathing if it gets wet. We want as much redundancy as possible when it comes to a system like this. For roof systems, a ventilated roof covering can be something as simple as a standing seam metal roof that's installed on 2 by furring or sleepers to provide continuous airflow, or something more complex like a vented overroof if shingles are desired. This will also help to prevent ice damming in those colder climates. We have a whole video on this topic which you can go and watch right here. Now we talked about air sealing on the outside, we also need to air seal the panel joints on the inside as well. Most manufacturers will just recommend a few continuous beads of acoustical sealant between the panel joints, and while this is fine, we don't want to rely on this for an air seal, since sometimes these beads of sealant aren't always applied continuously or uniformly. We need to tape the panel joints on the interior to prevent convective loops within the seams. Even though we addressed air leakage on the outside, warm moisture laden air on the interior side can still make its way through the panel joints and condense on the upper part of the flange if the interior joint aren't airtight, and so we need to apply air sealing tape to all those interior panel joints, preferably a pressure sensitive acrylic tape that's compatible with the OSB. Butyl tapes and rubberized asphalt tapes tend to peel off over time, compromising the integrity of the air seal, while pressure sensitive acrylics can actually gain strength over time. It may be necessary to apply a primer prior to installing the tape to ensure long term adhesion to the OSB's surface. You could also install a spray applied vapor permeable air barrier on the interior if you don't want to tape the joints. Now, the leads us to our next point, and that's no vapor barriers should be installed in a SIP assembly. You'll oftentimes see details or installations in which an interior poly
polyethylene vapor barrier is applied to the interior in colder climates, but this will only trap moisture between the vapor barrier and the sip. The rigid foam core is a very strong vapor retarder, especially at greater thicknesses, and so we want the OSB facers to be able to dry out if they get wet. This comes from confusion around the failures around air leakage at the seams that caused problems in the past, but these are air leakage problems, not vapor diffusion problems. You don't need a vapor barrier on the interior of this assembly. We have a whole video dedicated to the differences between air barriers and vapor barriers, which I'll link up here, but as long as the panel joints are air sealed on the exterior and the interior, you won't have anything to worry about. Guys, I hope this helped to clarify what's necessary if you're building with SIPs. They're a great system, they just require some extra attention in terms of water management and air sealing. For more information on high performance building and building science, head over to siri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.